Welcome to Story Talk, a series of online conversations between myself and storytellers featured in the Singapore Showcase. In this episode, I'm having a conversation with Melissa Rani T. Selva, writer and spoken word poet. Hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for joining us on Story Talk. Really looking forward to this conversation. Thank you for joining us on StoryFest 2022 and being part of the Singapore Showcase. So for all our listeners and viewers, tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice. Hi, Kamini. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I love StoryFest. I'm very, very happy and very blessed to be here. Thank um, you. I love it. I'm very excited for this year. Um, so I have been working as a spoken word poet and a writer, I want to say the last decade or so. I started writing poetry when I was still living in Malaysia. A lot of my work is informed by um, the Malaysian Indian identity mm -hmm. and, um, and what it means to be, you know, in, to, to, to navigate two languages and multiple cultures. But of course, it comes back to, you know, our Indian culture and, and the mythology and the mm -hmm. taboos that come with it. Um, so uh, my collection of, uh, of poetry and, and my body of work predominantly surrounds those things that we're not allowed to talk about. And uh, I love doing those kinds of things. And you've always given me space to do it. So I love it. And I'm very happy to be here and do it all over again. Wonderful. So you spoke about taboos and Indian mythology and the influence about how you were brought up, right? So was Indian stories, Indian folklore, Indian legends and epics a big part of your childhood growing up? Were these the kind of stories that either you read, someone read it to you or someone told them to you? I grew up in Subang Jaya, mm -hmm. uh, but I would go visit my grandmother in Klang, mm -hmm. in Port Klang. Mm -hmm. And um, every time I would go visit her on a weekend, my father would take me to this bookstore called Vidya Bookstore. Yes. And he would allow me to buy two Amachitra Kata comics. So I grew up with a constant supply of Amachitra Kata in my life. And that was my gateway yeah. into um, Indian mythology mm -hmm. and what gods look like and on the page. And, you know, I didn't come from a family that was very strict about religion. Mm -hmm. like my father was very like, you have to know all these gods and what they do and their significance and be very respectful about it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, feel free to interrogate as you wish. Wonderful. So that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. And as, as I got older, I realized that you know, you, 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 you get smarter and you start unpacking and nitpicking who actually wrote these stories, uh, what perspective do they take. Uh, and then you find out that most of them were written by men and very privileged men, very fair-skinned men. So their perspective and, and, and take of what um, an Indian goddess looks like is very skewed. And uh, I wanted to sort of expand and reimagine that. Yeah. So that brings me to your role in the Singapore Showcase this year okay. and the story that you've chosen to share with us live in, you know, going back to in-person storytelling, physical audiences at the Play Den. Your story has something to do with gods and goddesses, right? So I wrote this piece in 2020 and uh, as you know, it was the most difficult year of our lives. And um, I wanted to understand what was going on and, and in Indian culture, if something is, something uh, absolutely horrifying mm -hmm. or terrible is happening to you or the world the first thing you would do is go and see an astrologer yes it's all and in your charts exactly so the astrologer would, would open everything and like look at where the pain points are mm. and most of the time the pain points would lead to one specific god or several but most times it's one god and the god um, is usually the god of karma which is Lord Sunny Swaran and he is uh, also known as Shani Deva but then, in the process of, of learning and his history as a god and how he came to be, I discovered his mother. Ah, okay. And his mother, uh, her name is Chaya Devi, and she married the sun god and had children, and, and uh, Sunny, Shani is mm -hmm. one, of, uh, one of her children. And she is known as the god of shadows. And what was really fascinating to me is that if you really look 
deeper and between the lines of her history and the way she treated her children, especially her son, you will realize that this goddess suffered from postpartum depression. Something that we don't talk about in mythology and, you know, in scriptures. This is a topic that's taboo, right? Yes. Maybe even now to a certain extent. Because we don't have language to unpack it. But also, on top of all that, the idea of a mother being bad in, in our mythology, in our stories, is just unheard of. In Hindu mythology, the, the, the idea of a mother being bad or just being incompetent is, is always hidden. It's subdued, behind, right? Yeah. It's subdued behind another villain yes. or, or another character that uh, dominates the narrative. Yes. And we don't question the very obvious that yes. you know, these actions are a result of this woman doing something. Yes. So it's nice that you're addressing that ambiguity and it's nice that you're bringing to light the goddess of shadows, who's always kind of remained in the shadows, and all the other goddesses like Saraswati, Lakshmi, Parvati, they're all more in the limelight. A lot of times when people look at gods, they're always, there's always this distance between us and those gods and those myths. And what I like to do and what I love and what I think stories can do is build this bridge of, of creating a resonance and, and, and just building this connection that is more current and relevant mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and specific to the human experience. So moving forward for you, I mean, having done this for more than a decade now, what do you wish and hope for storytelling, for storytellers like yourself and for poets, people who work with spoken word? You know, do you have like a wish list, something that you hope for in the future? This is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish someone asked me this question a long time ago. I have been very privileged in the sense that um, the stories that I've chosen to tell and, and write about um, has gained a lot of um, interest from countries outside Asia. I think one of the things that I hope for is accessibility. It starts with a, a humble open mic mm -hmm. yep. at the right place at the right time. And um, and then with the right people in the audience and when they see you, that's how careers are born, that's how stories are told and they are they get put into books and they and stages grow from there. So I think it's for me, it's accessibility. And that's also how you know you develop potential artists because somebody young or a first timer at that event who's part of the audience yeah. is awestruck by the spoken word performer or is mesmerized by the storyteller and they realize that this is a career track that they can actually yes. try and this is something different that they can do or they share the same talents. Yes, definitely. I mean, it's also important that, you know, while we are present and taking up these spaces, that we pay it forward and create spaces whenever possible, wherever possible. You know, um, a lot of work needs to go into those things and, and, I'm, and you know, you're doing that um, with the work with, with StoryFest and it's about platforming and spotlighting and, and bringing the right people and connecting them and incubating them and getting collaborators to meet, right? And all of these things need to happen. And, and all of these things, I mean, when you break down the word accessibility, of course, you will come down to your your key points which is like money, mm -hmm. good governance uh, and lesser censorship. But if we take what we can control, I think the, the key item would be self-censorship. That needs to that needs to be significantly reduced. A lot of times people don't go on stage and they don't submit work to publications because they're so afraid. Yeah, we're all afraid that it will be ticked off, yeah. you need to redo the word, represent it, uh, even as an organiser, you know, sometimes yeah. it's really difficult going back to your artist and saying that, you know, can we rethink certain parts? Uh, being an artist myself, I, I hate doing that. Yeah. But we all find creative ways of working yes. around these very hard boundaries, right? And yeah. we find ways to continue to do what we do. The first time I heard you recite and narrate on stage was in Ipo and it was from your book Taboo. Yes, yes it was. I think the, the you know Taboo was a, a bit of a a bit of a springboard mm -hmm. 
and and when I look towards the future, I want to dive deeper into um, topics about motherhood and Indian identity, but what it means to be feminist mm. and Indian in, in telling, in reimagining these stories, and um, and that's kind of where my head's at. Come here, yeah, awesome! And we're going out. to hear this yeah. from you at the Singapore Showcase. So thanks so much, Melissa Rani, for sharing with me and talking with me on Story Talk. We're all looking forward to listening to this story about Chaya Devi, the goddess of shadows. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. If you enjoyed this conversation between myself and Melissa Rani, don't forget to listen to her story on Story Threads. And don't forget to listen to all the other Story Talk interviews as well. 